Alam Daniel, and welcome to my YouTube channel. We here at the channel are continuing in our series of videos with respect to uh, education, information, inspiration, guidance, advice. And in the last video, I said that sometimes uh, when you know the reason why a person was knocked off the derrick, knocked off the, pan, uh, the path, that is sometimes the way to get them back. The problem contains the answer. And I want to tell you a story about the Kleisenberger Rebbe. Very, an incredible man with, uh, with an unbelievable love of the Jewish people. After the war, uh, the Kleisenberger Rebbe did what he can to, uh, to uh, help uh, people, especially young people. Um, he set up, uh, in one of the, the DP camps, one of the displaced person camps, he set up a yeshiva, he set up a, a, a bezyako for the girls, and just to try and patch together a Jewish life for them. Word came to him about this young man, teenager, 15, 16 years old. His name is uh, Musholm. How this kid, before the Holocaust, had the potential to be a great... Torah scholar, a really big Talmud Chacham. After the war, he lost his faith. He became basically an atheist. There is no God. The Kleisenberger Rebbe was not the kind of person to take no for an answer. He asked that this young man be um, brought to him. He was a very dedicated man, especially when a Jewish soul, a Yiddish neshama, hung in the balance. There was nothing he wouldn't do. So he asked this bacher, this young uh, guy, to be brought to him. So when Mosholem, the young man, um, entered the Rebbe's room, the Rebbe motioned for him to, to sit down beside him. And um, the Rebbe said to the young man, Mosholem, I'm told that you are the son of uh, Reb Leibish. This is a, a man I knew very well. Yeah, the kid said. Almost glibly. He wasn't going to be lulled into any conversation uh, about Judaism and faith in God. He knew it all before. He grew up that way and he rejected it. After Auschwitz, that killed everything inside of him. The world of religion was something from his past. The Kleisenberger Rebbe continued, they tell me that you were once a great Talmud, you were once a great uh, student and very diligent in your studies. Is this true? Very non-confrontational. Knowing full well the significance of Torah study, to the Rebbe, the boy wasn't even going to give the Rebbe the, the, uh, the satisfaction of a yes. He just merely nodded his head. The Rebbe, again, in a very soft and a very soothing tone, he says, but now, now you're angry. The boy blurted out, Angry? Of course I'm angry. How could I tolerate the heinous, brutal destruction of our people? The, the best were taken from us, the finest lost forever. And you expect me not to be angry? The Rebbe lovingly extended his hand and he touched the side of Mashalom's face. And he said, you are so right. I also have suffered losses. They took my beloved wife and 11 children and they murdered them. I was left alone with nothing. You're right. The best were taken from us. And look what's left. And with these words, the Rebbe suddenly started crying, tears running down his face, sobbing. And as the pent-up emotion poured out of the Rebbe, young Mashulam also began to cry. And together, 
young Sean and the Rebbe mourned their losses on each other's shoulders. It wasn't necessary for the Kleisenberger Rebbe to say anything. Rebuke was not and never had been a factor. There was so much bitterness bottled up in this young kid. He only needed a release. And the Rebbe was that, that release, that catalyst. Words were not necessary. Tears, streams of tears, outpouring of emotion. That is what the boy needed. The Rebbe understood this. While others, regrettably, did not. Young Mushulam returned. And why? Because the Kaisenberger Rebbe understood his need. He knew that the way in was based on the way out. It's unfortunate that more people like young Mushulam did not connect with somebody of the caliber of the Kleisenberger Rebbe. There are people walking among us now who have left God, left Yiddishkeit, left their people. We need to reach out to them. We need to find the way to speak to them in a way that they will understand and with love and with kindness and with gentleness, bring them back. The loss of a Yiddish neshama, the loss of a Jewish soul, is a terrible, terrible thing. Let's dedicate ourselves to finding these souls and bringing them back. We're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until then, I'm Daniel, and thank you too much.